Flight Sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley. And good evening. It is a Monday night. It is 9 o'clock. It is time to tin your tip with myself, Gary Dibley, and uh, our ever-capable uh, mod master, that is Mark. Um, going to start off this evening. Um, we do have quite a lot to get through. Um, this week, um, another request that's come through on, on the forum is to talk a bit about uh, tooling and, and why we use the tools that we do. Um, but more importantly, I say more importantly, um, I do have uh, a little bit of an announcement to make. Um, some of you obviously uh, may have seen uh, some of the bits that have been flying around the forums and uh, this is the announcement. Vapefest 2013 is, uh, as we say, live and uh, will most definitely be happening this year. Um, the date uh, that has been chosen is the 17th of August, um, obviously 2013, uh, at the at the Moat House. I'm, I'm a little bit excited about this one, as you may well see. Um, the whole team uh, have, have sort of regrouped again um, for, for this year, um, and uh, Wayne's going to be heading up, um, putting you know the majority of bits and pieces together um this year we're, we're, we're looking at um potentially uh obviously the, the moat house has, has has been very good to us uh so we'll be back there again um but they have regenerated the uh, the third floor um so the the third floor may well if i if if it works out um we're looking at doing something specifically for for modders and mod vendors if we can um uh, I will try my damnedest to to get all that arranged, but uh, I don't know. Um, just as a news front, it, it's not been it's not been sort of you know th that long days that that, that it's sort of uh, been decided that that it would be taken on again, and and already the raffle prize is is just coming in. Um, we've we've got I think a full range of uh, of stuff from from. Uh, Paps, so we've got the GP Paps version 2.1 already. We've got a Paps X, we've got a spheroid, we've got a salt and pepper, whatever the hell that is, uh, a piccolo, um, and the up and coming Percy's. Um, from Van, he's already promised a silver dog or a, a lion LE uh, or a voodoo child if he can complete it by then. Um, Pro Vapes have already promised some uh, some one off uh, mods as, as they did last year, um, Privari type things. Um, and we have a Fogetti T22 with the LE hybrid upgrade. So already, um, Raffle is, is shaping up nicely. So yes, that is the, if you like, the big announcement uh, tonight. The um, Vapefest 2013 is on. Strongly suggest, um, if, if you guys uh, want to attend and, and want to be there, I would really strongly suggest getting your hotel bookings in now uh, or, or very rapidly. Um, I know that you'll have your favourite places, uh, but I think it's, it's going to be slightly busy this year. Um, and happy to be assisting yet again. Um, I must point out, nothing at all to do with Vape Trails TV, and thanks for the guys giving, giving me the time to, to be able to uh, to let you guys know that, that it's definitely on, it's definitely happening. Um, it was in the balance for, for a little bit. No one sort of took it on, um, so the, the team had a chat and come back again all good fun with all that said um i am going to uh I'll, I'll update a little bit later with a bit more of a can um but happy with that one really really happy um our our little vids tonight we're, we're talking about mods uh not mods we're talking about tools i um, see the excitement's gone to my head uh we're, we're talking about tools um it's been we've been asked to, to have a look at them uh and uh and some of the reasons that we use the bits that we do are whizzing firstly with uh, with Mark's videos and um, yeah I think it's watch the background with some of these see you in two so this week I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different than what we normally do there's been asked a question on the forum basically what sort of tools we use and why uh, so I thought I'd start off with something that has to be a must for a modder and that'll be your soldering iron uh, I don't have a very expensive soldering iron it's a basic soldering station basically with a adjustable 
temperature control. Basically, a place to hold the iron, a place to hold the pad for cleaning the tip. And that's really, it's not expensive, it's mid range really. Not too cheap, but within my price range. One of the factors I really look for with it is to have the adjustable temperature so I can match it to the type of solder I'm using, the type of job I'm doing at the time. And the other thing, you really want one where you can change the tip on it because you don't want to end up with it stuck with the same tip because these will wear out. I prefer quite a pointed tip, it's easier to get into the sort of jobs you're doing. A flat tip it can be really difficult working with. And you have a rather disgusting looking sponge pad, this needs replaced desperately. Uh, to clean the tip off and it's very important that you keep this damp or moist at least not soaking wet just damp enough so you can clean the tip off without it burning and so it's not hard otherwise you can damage the tip that way so I think a good damp pad keeps it nice and clean work and healthy you can just get an ordinary fixed temperature soldering in if when I go down as far as that and they will work fine but it take a bit more getting used to I think so that will be my suggestions for this so I suppose while we're talking about soldering irons something else to think about is the solder you use uh, in my case I almost exclusively use a lead free solder and this one happens to be rather a thin lead free solder, 0.6 millimeters diameter. I prefer this because it gives me a little bit more control over the thicker solders, but it does mean you go through rather quickly. But I use lead free because I tend to be working in the home around the rest of the air, uh, in the house where I'm living busy. So I don't want lead fumes flying up all over the place potential for contamination is there, as lead is not a very good or very nice substance. So for peace of mind I tend to use a lead free one. And again, coming with the variable temperature on the soldering end, it is important for me because lead free solder melts at a different temperature to the lead solder, so you need to adjust for what type you're using. And also one of these tools comes in very handy now and again, a solder sucker. If you happen to have made a right mess of things, or if you want to take a component off a board, or you've just added far too much solder when you're crossing contacts, use one of these. So you just push that down, pop this end under the melted solder, okay. so you keep the soldering in place, melt it down, and then just press the button, it causes a vacuum and sucks the solder up inside. A solder braid can be used exactly the same way, I don't have any per hand. But you just lay that onto the melted solder and the solder is absorbed up into the braid away from wherever you're working. So, I think for me that covers soldering ends. But if anybody's got any questions you can always type them in the chat and let me know. I'm sure we can answer them all here. Okay, I wanted to go on to my uh, my next little bit, um, which is basically about my uh, my fluke fetish. Um, I am partial to a good fluke, um, and again, this is is uh, I, I work with with guys all day um, that used high end test equipment. Um, primarily, I work for a, uh, I manage an office for a. A uh, electrical and data and telecommunications company, um, and our guys. I think we, the last fluke that we bought was about nine and a half grand, um, and as part and parcel of that, this come free. Um, and my boss said, "You can have that. Thank you very much." Uh, and then we bought another one, and, and this come free. And he said, "You can have that." So uh, nice boss. Um, but yeah, essentially, this is nothing to do with vaping whatsoever. But it's a bit of fluke, so I thought you'd like to see it. Um, this is just a little distance measure, which is great because I do a lot of uh, a lot of surveys and uh, and for measuring it's brilliant. Um, 
a little bit of flukage, but it's got a laser and everything. This is so cool. You know, you press that, you measure it, and it tells you the distance between there and there. Fantastic bit of kit. Um, but yeah, about 120 quid's worth, I think. Um, nice for free. Uh, let me put that back in this little holder. Test meters is obviously the reason I'm uh, I'm showing you my uh, my fetish with fluke, um, and these bad boys are as 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 good as they get in terms of a test meter. Uh, I know there are um, other brands. Um, I, you could say I've, I've grown up with it, and and it's what you've grown up with and what you know. Um, but these are these are the ding dong danglies when when it comes to um, to test meters. Um, they're very, 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 very accurate meters, and uh, I think my fluke fetish has spread um, amongst the team. I know that uh, that Dave owns one, and uh, and a couple of the other. I think both Dave's got a fluke. I think um, this one here is the fluke uh, 365. Um, it is effectively um, a clamp meter, and uh, this one has a a detachable clamp, so uh, you can take the clamp off and and use it elsewhere. You may ask, why would I need a clamp? Um, I think that the best person who's, who's, who's made use of the, uh, of the clamp, or the amp sniffer, um, as, as it may be better known, is our own Mr. Dorm. He's, he's done a lot of things with, uh, with sniffing amps, and, and very, very sensitive, and very, very good at sniffing amps. The reason I like this style of, of meter is because it's got a very simple tendal. It's off, it's on, and it measures voltage, and it measures resistance. It is as simple as that. Two selections. You may ask, as a vapor, why would I need a voltmeter? Um, not just for modding, but they come in very, very useful in other things. Now, this one here is is the uh, the if you like the resistance tester, or as it's most affectionately known in in the chat there is the uh, the beepometer. You touch your two prongs together and it beeps. It's quite as simple as that. Beep, 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 um, How do I use that? You have a black one and you have a red one. This one is positive, this one is negative. In terms of an Etty, we have a, a little car here. You've got your middle pin down there, which is pos, and your outer ring, which is neg. You would stick that on your middle pin, poke that down your middle pin, and touch the body of your mod or the outer pin and something's not beeping and I don't know why hold on there we go and you hold that in there and you have a resistance of a 2.5 ohm Carter which is exactly what this one says on the box 2.5 ohms now with some meters they they are not as accurate not as accurate um, and what you would have to do is is work out when you now the, the thing with the fluke you don't necessarily have to zero out the contacts on the fluke um, they are very well zeroed so I'm very very confident in this piece of kit that whatever I'm metering I'm reading is exactly what I'm getting I don't have to take away decimal points this or any other on some meters when you when you touch two probes together um, it will go down to something like the reason why you see the, the flute going bonkers is, is trying to zero, but it's, it's, it's fully zeroed. There's, there's no um, calibration required. Some meters will give you, if you like, um, when you touch your, your probes together, a 0.2, a 0.3, a 0.4, um, and that 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 is what you'd have to take away from your final figure when you, when you test your resistance. So if I had a 0.4 on the fluke and I touch those uh, on, you know, I had 2.5 on that atty, um, you would take away that 0.4, so it would give you a 2.1 resistance on your ATI. The other very good setting is our voltage setting. Now our voltage setting here on DC, hold on, he's gone bonkers. Voltage on DC, is, you know, doing it upside down is not good. So I've got my voltage on my DC there. Bring in a battery, measure the two probes, plus and minus, and I've got 3.7 volts on that battery. Is it going to go up? Is it going to go down? No, it's not. So 3.7 volt battery, that needs charging. Um, well, I say, you know, I, I like to 
peak them up to about 4.2 this, this is 3.7 what else have we got this one here I think needs charging he says yeah see I, I always when, when they're in the, the variable wattage mods I always charge them at around about 3.7 volts when they get down to there I cut them out um, and, and charge them so my little uh, my little bit about my uh, my multimeter um, you may call me a tool tart I don't care um, I've been doing it long enough to treat myself when it comes to tools um, I'm not saying that the cheaper tools don't don't do a, a decent enough job um, by, by no means um, they most certainly do however I've bought kit that I know is going to last me a long time. I'm going to be doing it a long time, not not just putting it out of the box every every sort of uh, other you know day or so, day or so. Crap, that'd be good. Um, yeah, every week uh, to test your batteries. I, I I use this daily, day in day out. I use this um, day in day out. I use the cutters day in day out. I use all my other stuff. Um, so I want stuff that's going to to last and perform, and I know it's of a decent quality. That's me personally cheap meters are, are going to do a job they're going to perform um, probably they could last just as long but I, I'm one of those people that put put my um, put me money in a brand shall we say um, yeah you know, I don't know. love it or, or not that's me um, what I do like is I've just bought I'm going to show very quickly one of these Roby One Kenobi I call it um, it's a tiny little um, four volt rechargeable battery uh, battery drill um, it's got a little and yeah under that there you are, that comes out but I've got some of these um, little hex um, these have got the hex bits on and I've got some drill bits that have got the hex attachment on um, and for just drilling out pilot holes you know slowly whatever that's cracking nice little bit of kit very very cheap 20 quid I paid for that nice um, and it's a good little screwdriver. Good bit of kit. There you go. Um, enough waffle from me. I will see you back after this. He says, totally pressing the wrong button. And we're back in the room. And if you didn't guess, uh, tonight, as, as requested, we are talking about um, some of the tools that we use for, for modding. Um, and uh, yes, I'm, we're going through them. We're going through them. Um, yeah, I am a bit of a tart when it comes to to tools. Um, apologies for that, but uh, but a few. I'm gonna do this again just because I can before the adverts. It's on. It's on. Seventeenth of August. I'll say it again. Seventeenth of August. Happy bunny. Uh, I'm gonna slip into my first little ad break, and uh, I'll see you back very shortly after this. Flight sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley. in Yorkshire for your basic needs. That's iVeber.co.uk and iVeber-Elixir.co.uk iVeber and iVeber-Elixir.co.uk Pro sponsors of VeberTrails.tv Liberty Flight sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley. And we are back, and uh, and those ads are too short. 
I think we need some more. Um, <laughs> yeah, no time to do anything. Uh, yeah, I do apologise if I look a little bit flushed tonight. Um, I've been running around the garden like I did before I started doing the show um, because it is extremely windy here and uh, all of a sudden my daughter's massive like plastic little tyke slide um, decided to do somersaults around the garden. Um, it's one of those. I'm waiting for the roof to be lifted off the shed at any point, um, but it seems to have died down, hopefully. <laughs> don't want to be doing that um, so yes as I mentioned we are on with the tools um, we've got some good stuff lined up for you uh, next couple of weeks hopefully um, and now I go on holiday but for the time being um, on with the tools and uh, and and I go on to, uh, to a little hand thingy this week um, here we go and we are back in the room once again um, this is take two of this video, um, mainly because I've had a few little issues with uh, with encoding this one. Um, we're back again this week and uh, we are talking about uh, tools and laid out before me um, on props of wonderfulness. I do have uh, one of well, my, my probably my most, I'll say my most recent purchase of tools. Um, which is my, my nice set of, uh, of Nipex um, branded um, pliers, cutters and bump wrench type thingies. And I'm just going to give you a, a, little, um, a little guided tour. Let me just move my mod stands. Oh, my cutter stands out of the way. We'll just talk you through some of these. Now, these are a, a little set of uh, Nipex um, side cutters. Uh, they are relatively expensive in terms of, of cutters. Um, I've gone through God knows how many of, of the cheaper sets. They've all gone blunt and this that, and the other. Now, the reason I chose these, um, all of our, I work for electrical contractors, um, or that's one of the disciplines that we do do, and uh, all of the guys there absolutely swear by these things um, they uh, do carry a lifetime guarantee um, pretty much like the uh, the snap-on stuff does for uh, you know the, for mechanics for example um, they stay incredibly sharp um, I've done lots of things I shouldn't with these and they are still as sharp as hell um, very good little little side snips um, Good point, probably to talk about wire as well. Now I buy wire by a by a hundred meter drum, um, and uh, and this stuff here is a a sixteen gauge wire, um, and uh, you know these these very little effort snip that all day long, um, being very wasteful with the wire, um, but they they do, and they're a sharp as hell. I find with a, a tiny little nibble around the outside, and I, I can strip back. I don't make sound boring talking about cutters, but a tiny little nibble, dump, and it strips it back with minimum sort of uh, input, if you know what I mean. But you know, they, these are probably you can get these anywhere from sort of sixteen to twenty odd quid for a set of these. Um, but I know that that I've got these once I've bought them, um, they're going to last. You know, they will last me a lifetime. They are guaranteed for the life and. You know, if they fail in any way, I can take them back and I get a new pair. Nice little set of side snips. Um, if you're going to be modding quite a lot, I think it's it's good to invest in in some some decent tools. Um, these ones here, they 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 are uh, the smaller ones, the electrician ones that they have at work. They just sort of finish about here. Mine mine are diddy compared to theirs, but nice nice action on them. Like them. Um, the next thing in my in my arsenal is is the uh, again Nipex uh, fine nose pliers. Now the fine nose pliers, you, you could argue that realistically, if you were going to invest in a decent set of uh, of, and, and you don't want to buy the two, you could invest purely in a set of these um, because these also have a, a cutting edge that that will do exactly the same as as the others do. Um, and will strip wire you know, exactly the same. Um, so you could get away with one of these. Um, these are used for sort of bending, poking, pulling, twisting, whatever. You know, if, if I'm working on a, an ATI connection, you know, and, and these really good for the grommet. 
do I need a set this expensive um, or you know with a lifetime guarantee you know to do what I do no I don't but the, the thing is uh, you know I I'm a man um, and I had one of those scenarios where it was a case of uh, you know it's your birthday what do you want um, and uh, you know normally a, a man thing you know it's normally I don't mind you know, I, I, I don't really need anything and you end up with pants and smellies um, and the occasional pair of socks this year I did say I would love a decent set a, a little trio of, of decent tools um, and the family you know sent money instead which was great because I've got enough socks um, even the ones with holes in are still wearable um, and I treat myself to, to these the, the next one obviously stunty uh, disappeared again Nipex these are about 25 quid a set did I need them no I didn't but I know they're gonna last me a long time um, and and these again you know with a, a lackey band or something like that right around the end of them you've got I don't know how much a, a, a vice would cost you but these in terms of modern and, and when you've got those on the bench and you hold uh, you know something in there with, with an attic connection on there they're fantastic they, they hold it very 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 well and and gives you a stable base I put my sold down in there these are now sort of getting battle scarred um, so you know solder burns and you know there is some sign of abuse on the oh look, look glisten of abuse there um, but yes that that's my brief overview um, of of my my little triage of of uh, expensive I'm a bit of a tool tart um, but I think if if you if you want something you know that you can use if you only make the occasional mod then buy all me you know get get the cheaper ones you can get a set from a pound shop um, for me this this these were a treat um, you know and that's as far as it goes there's no reason to use them my explanation as to why don't rush out and buy uh, Nipex unless you want to um, you know we all we all buy shiny mods and this that, and the other and and for me, a, 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 a shiny tool is just as good as a, as a shiny mod. Um, but there you go. I've waffled far long enough about my pliers. Um, uh, I'll catch you back very shortly after this. I suppose moving on from the soldering aim, I've got the manual tools I tend to use a lot. Uh, these range from various types of pliers, things like a uh, my shop, like needle nose pliers. Oh, this is the more standard pliers, depending on what sort of job I'm trying to do. Whether it's something to something to grip, where I need a lot of strength, or something for more precision, I use them. They tend to be just cheap ones, but good sturdy ones. And the same would be said of the snips I use. I've just got the budget pair, but they do the job for me for the work that I do. Uh, I could, if I had the money, I would go for the more expensive tools, which in the long run do work out cheaper because you end up with a lifetime guarantee for a reliable product. But for the place I'm at at the moment, I'll just stick with the cheap ones, they will do the job for you and they're good enough. Uh, also you've got a thing like a good, safe, strong knife. Uh, something with a sturdy handle is preferable and a fairly short blade so you've got control over it and there's much less likelihood of you slipping and cutting something nasty. Even better would be the tape that Gary has with the thumb guard and finger guards and that on it, which I will have to be investing at some point. But something like this will do if you're careful. And if you're using something like this, you need to be confident. If you're nervous about using it, I'd advise not to use it, to be honest. Because if you're unsure, that's when you tend to have accidents. You always make sure it's a sharp blade. Because a dull blade will do a lot more damage than a sharp one will. Always remember, don't leave the minor end of the bit out. Lock them away. 
Uh, I also use some cheap tools like a stunt wrench claw, cheap Chinese stunt wrench claw. She'll do the job for gripping things uh, with the band on it, like Gary suggests. It will hold things in place while you work on them, because that's the biggest thing you find when working, is you haven't got enough hands to do what you want. So, something like this, the helping hands you can buy with the magnifier and the grips, they can be very useful. Or something like a small vice. This, I think, the idea for me getting one of these, I think, originally came from Mark if I remember rightly. He yeah, has one like this. Something small, portable, and just put it where I need it. I could fix it to a bench if I wanted to, but I find it easier to move it around. And this in particular is very useful when I'm working on atomizer connectors. So I can just grip a cartomizer in here and screw the atomizer connector on so it's nice and stable. It gives me a good area to work. So again, so I risk less of burning myself with a sword again if I slip or anything like that. And with that in mind, little pairs of tweezers, fine, fine nose tweezers, things like that, can be very handy for manipulating wires inside circuit boards and inside boxes on circuit boards, getting them into place, and gripping them as you're trying to solder, because the wires get very hot when you're adding solder to them. So, a selection of these will come in very handy for you. Other things you're going to want to use on a regular basis is a good ruler for marking things out, keeping straight edges of course, which is something I'm never very good at. Um, possibly things like a little blowtorch, just to heat up a uh, heat shrink, things like that, can come in very handy. A uh, good set of screwdrivers, preferably set of more the precision screwdrivers with the various small bits for different types of screws, things like that can come in very handy, especially when you're taking things apart in particular. So if you want to do repairs, you need to get in, so they, they come in handy. And I think that covers most of the manual tools I would use. And back with something else shortly. Okay, and uh, my next little uh, toolage purchase thing we're going to talk about is is firstly and foremostly um, I know we've touched on these in the past but any modder can most definitely make use of a set of these um, I've talked about them Mark's talked about them um, I actually sort of see these in, in Mark's videos um, I knew they were out there um, but after watching Mark how how easy um, it, it sort of made things uh, in terms of drilling holes. Previously, I was drilling out pilot holes and and etc. You know, etc. Cetera, et cetera. But to actually switch to a set of these has made things so much easier. Um, with this small one, I've, I've found particularly in plastic. If you're drilling in plastic, you, you don't necessarily even need a pilot hole. Um, yeah, you know, there's more of enough of a grip on there to drill it straight down to uh, to sort of atomizer type depth, um, and, and not worry about pilot hole drilling, da da da, going down to nine mil for your atty. Um, they're brilliant, and, and and this set here I got from a company called CPC. Now CPC are, if you like, an arm of of Farnell. Um, they have a very good uh, online um, section in terms of tools and boxes and, and all sorts. And these, I can't remember exactly, they're around about the 20, 25 quid mark. Um, again, a birthday um, purchase. Um, when they come in, uh, the big one here uh, goes from 4 to 30 mil. And the mid range one goes from 4 to 20 mil. And the small one here goes from 4 to 12 mil. Now, this one here, uh, I tend to use, uh, or am tending to use, these two here. Um, I use this one to go down to 80 depth, and this one here takes it out a little bit further, you know, to the 20 mil, 19, 20 mil for, for the switches. Um, so those two, you know, and get away with using most things. Now what I'm trying to do is, is use these two and keep this bad boy in reserve. Um, so I've got a backup plan. 
Now again, this will also go down, you know, to to atty depth, this that, and the other. Um, but uh, trying to trying to hold back, um, so I've got a sharp one. Um, but to, you know, if you think I, I I've used these, God knows how many times, and and as of yet, they are still relatively, or well, they're still sharp. They're still very very sharp. Um, so they are a, a a very worthwhile investment if if you're going to be modding. Um, talking about the drill bits I use, I tend to use um, the if you like these goldy type color ones, which are predominantly um, marketed in terms of a metal drill bit. Um, and I have paid sort of, I, I think this this particular one was probably about five six quid um, from B and Q, um, and and that's a, a nine mil for for drilling atties. Um, and I've got them right the way through the sizes. But I, I tend to find that if, you, if you're using um, the metal drill bits, these are no good for wood at all. Um, but for plastic and for, for tin, metal, what you know, all, all the, the other things that we make mods in, these are a very good buy. Um, if you buy a decent branded one, um, they don't tend to blunt that quickly, this, that, and the other. Um, again, you know, the wood bits, I've used these for drilling out. now. I did start out using these, um, but obviously if you're drilling in wood, you've got this massive great end piece on, on the end here uh, that can sort of, uh, if, if, if you're going to a certain depth in wood and you're getting close to the, to, the, to the bottom of your mod, you don't want this big spike sticking through. So what I have been using is, um, sorry, excuse me, it might be slightly noisy getting this, this out, but this thing here, um, and you might have to excuse the focus. This one is made by Magcats, um, and, and this it does exactly the same job as this one. However, if you can see the difference with this one, whereas I, you know, I've got a, a layer for this big old, you know, step down in, into the wood. With this one here, it tends to, you know, it, it's it's almost a, a flat edge, and these things don't half chomp through the wood. They seriously do. A very very good buy. Um, they're they're a, a flat ended, um, you know, straight down. And this one here will is sized for uh, particularly for a battery. So that's you know I, I know I can get a, an 18 mil battery um, down in there. And what I tend to do when I'm buying these is I'll, I'll take the battery with me, and I <laughs> I'm measuring. It's stupid, um, but I'll measure them by by getting one out and roughly sizing it up on the bottom of a battery and going right okay yeah even though you know that that's a an 18 mil battery i always like to have a second look gives me a bit of space to play with um so yes and then obviously i've got my my sort of my wood bits in there if i'm drilling out it is in wood and all that sort of stuff but i keep, keep everything in the little case um that, that come with my step bits um I think if, if if you're doing a lot, it's it's worth getting a a decent drill bit, and and these ones, I mean, particularly that one there uh, that I've been using to drill out Atty connections, probably, and I'm not joking, for the past sort of three years, I've used that drill bit to drill everything um, in terms of an Atty connection. I, I that one has has been with me, and I know it has, uh, you know, for for that long until these boys come along and I've been using those but that one has served me so well and at six quid you know get three years use out of it drilling tin plastic god knows that you know what it, it, it's done well I guess what I'm trying to say is sometimes you know if, if you're making the odd mod get a, get a cheap bit if, if you're going to make lots of them then it's worthwhile spending out the extra bucks on on uh, bucks Jesus uh, pounds on on a decent one well I don't know where bucks come from um, but there we go that is my little uh my little drill bit set and uh, I say do apologize if this is boring some of you um, but it is a request and people want to know what we use and, and why we use it so predominantly this is what we're putting this bit together for you um, I will catch you back ever so shortly after this and there we go we are back in the room once again and the wind is whipping up out there so uh, we may well see a bit of uh, roof liftage uh, at some point so I'm sitting, it's rocking it's rocking in here um, big time uh, seems to stop every time I go live which is good um, so he's obviously listening 
or SO19 that are outside playing silly buggers with me. Um, it is time to slip into a second little air break and uh, we'll come back very shortly after this. Liberty Flight sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley. And we are back. Yeah, I was just having a little fogging session. Um, fogging, that was. Um, I treated myself. I, I see something come up on the forums this week, and uh, I wanted one for a, for a little while, so uh, I, I managed to grab myself a little uh, little mini hex, the 14500 thing for my 306. Like that, it's good. And it's shiny. It's very shiny. Um, yeah. I don't know what I, th I might keep that for specials. I like that. It's good stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, if you didn't get it earlier, um, <sighs> Fate Fest 2013, August 17th, if you didn't catch it earlier. Um, but you probably did. Um, so uh, I won't keep saying it again. But yes, all the uh, lots of nice prizes and things and stuff and all of that sort of bits. Um, yeah, we, if you're if obviously if you you tune in first time seeing us, um, normally we we do mods. Um, this week uh, we've been asking our viewers what they would like to see, and uh, and that offer still continues. Um, get yourself down to the uh, Vapor Trails uh, forum, and uh, you can put anything on there that you would like to see me and Mark do, obviously within reason. Uh, but this week we have gone with the tool themes, uh, mainly because um, we've been waiting. Uh, we we well, I put a request on on UK Vapors um, for um, some of these Vamos, because the other request that we had is is to look at uh, Vamos, and and that will be uh, commencing um, next week. But I have a little look tonight um, if I can get time and get round to it. Which means must stop waffling and and get on with the next bit, where we start going into uh, into Bowery things. I'll see you back after this. So I suppose moving on from the various manual tools, the other tool I do seem to use quite a lot is a rotary tool, some like a Dremel, some similar. I mean, I do use drills quite a bit, but I've mentioned them before in other videos, so... Let's have a look at the Dremel type tool. This is one area where I would suggest it's probably a good idea to buy a good brand. Pay a bit more. It's one of the few things where I spend a bit more on, is this. Because, as you've seen in some of my earlier videos, I use this one originally. But the clutch in it is gone pretty much, so it'll just stall when you try and do anything pretty much. Because it's not that well made. But a nice lightweight cordless one can be very handy if you're only doing light work. Some of like this will work fine for you. But I think you're yeah, much better off with a precision one like a Dremel. Some made much stronger, better tolerances. And then you go to the dentist. 
something like that. Again, I tend to use a cordless one for most of what I'm doing, because otherwise the cord just gets in the way of working. And I want to be quite precise with a lot of the stuff I'm doing. So something like that is good. You can get a cordless one if you, eh, a corded one if you prefer. Uh, that way you don't have to worry about the battery and it'll be charged all the time. So that's the one thing I've found. It's whenever I come to use it, the battery's always flat because I've forgotten. Uh, you have various different bits for them. And again, I would say that you need to consider investing a bit of money in a good range of bits for all the different functions. It's amazing how often you find looking for a particular piece. And there's more. Looking for a particular head for it or something like that to do a specific job. If you've got a good wide range kit, you can do just with anything with one of these. As long as it's small. And you couldn't put a big drill bit in one of these, for instance. But you can simply start off a hole. You can use the various parts to cut out holes. And you can be quite precise if you're any good at it. Unlike me. But I find the Dremel tools in particular to be invaluable. Because often you can't get in with a knife. So a nice fine point like this one, which is probably the piece I use most of any of them. Something like that. It just cuts through. You just cut out any precise shape that you need. Because when I'm modding, I've found all the time it's not a square I need, it's not a circle I need. It's, it tends to be an unusual shape to fit something in or to carve a piece out. And this will work well on wood and plastic. So spend a bit of money on that. Should last you a while. And something else I should really mention when you're using something like this is a safety note. Really, is these things spin very fast, and that one's rated uh, 1500 RPM. Yeah, 15, 15,000 RPM. Uh, if you're using these discs, for example. Things like the reinforced one are these incredibly thin lightweight cutting discs. There is a big, big tendency for bits to fly off from the thing that you're using, eh, the thing that you're cutting, or from the discs themselves. So you need to wear eye protection when you're using these. And watch your fingers. Because the speed that these are going, they can cut through fingers very easily. And if you should slip, these discs in particular are prone to shatter and as you can see they're very fragile discs so one slip with it one way or the other and you're going to bend this and it'll just snap and bits will fly everywhere I've had some hit my glasses before so and even with a strong reinforced one like this you've got the chance of it flying off somewhere that you really don't want it to so just be careful be safe I know it doesn't always look good when I'm doing stuff, but I do take my safety very carefully with this stuff. Despite appearances to the country. And uh, you have to excuse me because today I'm, I'm recording uh, via, the, uh, via the Wirecast. Um, which is the broadcast program we use, but I'm, I'm, I'm being a bit lazy. Um, I'm out uh, this weekend, um, hopefully visiting my, my mother because it's her birthday. Um, so happy birthday, mum, uh, for Saturday. Um, today's Friday. I've, I've actually had to, uh, I've taken a, an early day off work to come home and get the filming done so I can actually do stuff this weekend. Um, anyway, back on to tools. Um, you may well see uh, I'm, I'm using the webcam, I'm, uh, you'll see your stuff in the background and all sorts of, you know, but it doesn't matter. This, this, this is about, um, you know, about the tools we use and, and sort of why we use them. This is, is by far um, one of the best modding purchases I have made. Um, now I know Mark has, has talked about the, uh, the Dremel 
Um, this is only a, a, probably the cheapest of, of the Dremels, the, the Dremel 300. Um, I have had this now for a good um, three years of solid modding um, and it has never let me down. Um, it is an absolute stunning piece of kit for uh, for all sorts. Um, I've got the click system blades on there now, uh, but I'm not going to talk about a Dremel because um, uh, Mark's done that. The best thing with a Dremel is is all of the little bits you can get with it, um, and this you know, the workstation you can pretty much pick up now. I think for for round about uh, you know, 20, 30 quid, something like that. Um, you know, 30 quid. Well, if you've got your Dremel, it's brilliant. You can this thing here. Uh, with with the Dremel in the orientation it is and it's got literally a, uh, a screw collar that screws up over the Dremel holds that in place um, and then you attach job is but in in this orientation with uh, you, you probably if you were watching and, and you you watch when I was doing the routing that's all performed on here um, the great thing about this is you've got an adjuster on the back here you can adjust up and down the the, the height of of your work table um, and if your works under here and you need to drop that down You've you've got your little uh, your little press thing to, to to bring that down, and I hope that doesn't turn on. Um, if it did, if the wife suddenly turns a pair to the shed on, oh, I'm less two fingers. Um, but yeah, so you've got that where you can literally, you know, up and down like a like your pillar drill. Um, fantastic. It's not the most solid bit of kit in the world. Um, you can bolt it to the bench. I choose not to. Um, I've never had an incident where where this has been. You know that I'm putting it under that much strain, and I think that's the thing with tools. If you put them under strain, then they start to become unstable. I don't put this under strain. Um, I will use it within its limitations, um, and it's great. You know, for, for routing and stuff like that, you can br bring a piece underneath, get your level. You can move it around under there, nudge it down a bit, or if you want to work at a set level, um, set your level. Uh, particularly, you could slot your wood underneath, start it up, and and route in there turn it off, drop it a level and rework again. It's a very flexible tool. Um, it's got a depth gauge on the side, so uh, you know when you are going up and down you can set your depth gauge as you would on, on you know, a good pillar drill. Um, I use it mostly um, in, uh, that's the wrong screw, <laughs> screw on the side. Now what this will do, there's one here that you can actually start adjusting this at various angles and that'll go all the way around so you can uh, adjust and tighten at, at the angle you want to use your Dremel at. Now if that's the angle you want to use it at, all well and good, um, and if you wanted it at that angle for doing things like sharpening blades and or whatever, you know, sharp, you want to sharpen at your pliers, perfect angle to do it at. Um, but I, I tend to use it at that angle quite a bit. Um, and at this angle, you know, I, you can work, if you're working with Sorry, I've just realised I've stuck my face right in the microphone. Um, you know, if you're cutting up plastic boxes, you know you can ease your plastic in there, and and you don't necessarily want it up in here. I'd lower it down a bit, but you can ease your plastic in there, work your plastic around, and this at any other. Great at that end. Um, whenever I'm doing, you know, if I'm cutting uh, uh, an atty, for example, um, and I would attach it to uh, an atomizer end. And literally have that he's making noise have that blade rolling um, and then I would just feed my atty into that switch and the metal blades that I've got on on here the push click type and and they last forever um, fantastic cutting at is brilliant so you know there are, there are lots of flexibility in in this little bad boy here um, definitely if you've got a Dremel and you're modding a well yeah, you couldn't spend your money on anything better than one of these if, if you you know if you, if you want to have a, a pillar drill a, a nice holder for it because it can be a pain in the bum trying to hold that damn thing when it's vibrating and trying to cut something um, fantastic I don't know how many times I've said that best bit of kit in my arsenal arsenal I said with all that said I shall uh, I shall head away now um, and try and find something else to talk about um, we're doing this purely because obviously it's been requested and guys want to see what kit we use to do what. Um, love this bit of kit. Do. I think Mark, after he's, uh, after he's done his little Dremel bit, he'll be, he'll be getting one of these bad boys. I can assure you. Well, I can't assure you, but I reckon he should do. Now, I'm fishing around with the mouse to try and find the stop button. As soon as I hit that, I'll pop away.
and uh, I'll be back in a bit. So a little uh, a little bit of a look now. Um, next week, um, just wanted to give you a preview on next week's show. And uh, essentially, I've I've been sent um, one of these little puppies. Um, this is actually a a working, I believe. Um, you get out of there, you can't see that. A working one. Um, I did ask for 40 ones. Now, say working, this, this does all the right stuff. It makes vapour and all that sort of stuff. However, I think this may be like a version one spring because if I give this a little rattle, um, you'll notice. Oh, you see this at the moment. Hold on. Let's just set it at, say, 7 watts. So I've got it set at 7 watts. Now let me display go. Now I'm going to just give it a little shake. A little shake. Sometimes it turns off. Um, and then you've got to do your five clickies to turn it on again. And when you turn it on again, your voltage is right the way I could up. It, it sets it at three watts again. So I'm assuming it might be, uh, I don't know, I don't know whether this is actually faulty um, or whether it needs a, you know, taking it out and doing some jiggery poke with it might make it work better. But I think this is an old version, it's got the old spring in, it's, it's this one here, 18650 battery. It's really, really shaky, really shaky. There you go, turned off again. Um, Back on again. What water are we at? I maintained this water jet time. Got some weird, weird spread it folks on. But that may be the old, old, old type because my um, my new one, uh, which is the stainless steel one. If I shake that, oh, sorry, I don't want you to see that. Um, if I shake that about, uh, it, it still it's there fires and it works and all that sort of stuff maybe down to the spring don't know um, but yes anyway what I was going to say is this one here is up for dissection coming very shortly probably next week hopefully it's very windy here and cold tonight I'm back to me in the studio and there we go we are back in the studio and yes that Vamo uh, has definitely got an old spring in um, and uh, and that's why it's flapping around like a good in there uh, but it's got some weird little faults um, we're, we're gonna we're gonna start looking at, uh, at dissecting the uh, the Vamo next week and I need to find it a new home so uh, I shall be I'll, I'll be looking at where we're gonna place it um, one more time before we go away tonight um, I'm gonna do this because I can um, yes Vapefest 2013, 17th of August this year um, at the Moat House. Uh, going back to the tooling very, very quickly, obviously we've talked a lot about tools tonight. The one thing we didn't talk about is safety. Well, Mark did a little bit, I didn't. Um, I think when you work with tools a lot, it, it becomes second nature. Um, and, you know, I know to keep me hand out of the way when I'm drilling this, that and the other. Um, you know, to labour a point, it, it, when you work with something, the, there's a power drill or it's a sharp blade or anything, you know, um, you, you can hurt yourself. And and I, I learned by by hurting myself. Um, I've drilled through my finger, I've cut tendons, I've done all sorts, um, and and ended up in uh, in a whole heap of pain. So uh, we don't want you guys to suffer the same fate. Um, with all that said, uh, it is time to wrap things up tonight. Um, thank you very very much for joining us tonight. We will see you again next week uh, on Monday. And don't forget, all the wonderful shows coming up this week, um, all the way through. Uh, tomorrow, right the way through to Saturday, Bear Friday. Uh, so, catch you later, guys. Cheers. Bye.
Flight sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley.